Dr. Anna Hetnick is bringing you the latest update of the U.S. FDA approvals for the week of September 11th through the 15th, 2023. First up this week, the FDA has approved Ojara, that's spelled O-J-J-A-A-R-A, also known as momolotinib, for the treatment of intermediate or high-risk myelofibrosis in adults with anemia. Ojara is a once-a-day oral JAK1, JAK2, and Activin A receptor type 1, ACBR1 inhibitor. According to a press release from the manufacturer GSK, to date, Ojara is the only approved medicine for both newly diagnosed and previously treated myelofibrosis patients with anemia and addresses key manifestations of the disease, namely anemia, constitutional symptoms, and splenomegaly. Myelofibrosis is a blood cancer that can lead to severely low blood counts, including anemia and thrombocytopenia, as well as splenomegaly and constitutional symptoms, which include fatigue, night sweats, and bone pain. About 40% of patients present with anemia at diagnosis, and nearly all patients will develop anemia over the course of having myelofibrosis. Ojara was approved on the basis of findings of the Momentum Phase 3 trial, comparing momolotinib versus danazole in patients with myelofibrosis who are symptomatic and anemic and had previously been treated with an approved JAK inhibitor. The FDA has accepted and granted priority review for a new drug application for resmetarom for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH, Madrigal, the manufacturer of Resmetarom, is requesting approval under the FDA's accelerated approval pathway. Resmetarom is a once-daily oral thyroid hormone receptor, THR beta selective agonist, being evaluated for the treatment of NASH with liver fibrosis in four phase three trials, including the pivotal Maestro NASH study. NASH is a more advanced form of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD. NAFLD is estimated to afflict more than 20% of adults globally and about 30% in the United States. Of that population, 20% may have NASH. NASH is rapidly becoming the leading cause of liver transplantation in the U.S. There are currently no FDA-approved therapies available for the treatment of NASH. The planned FDA action date for resmetarum is March 14, 2024. Attention all businesses in need of exceptional medical writing support. We're Nascent Medical and we are the solution. We are a team of skilled MD and PhD level medical writers who specialize in fast turnaround needs assessments, manuscripts, slide decks, ad board summaries, and much, much more. Don't settle for anything less than pure excellence when it comes to your medical writing assistance. Just visit us at nascentmc.com. We're here so that you never have to be without excellent medical writing assistance. That's nascentmc.com. In a similar manner to the flu vaccine, which gets updated yearly, the FDA has approved updated COVID-19 vaccines for the upcoming season. The updated shots have a single target, an Omicron descendant named XBB.1.5. By contrast, the previous COVID-19 vaccines are combination shots targeting the original coronavirus strain and a much earlier version of Omicron virus, making them outdated. While the prevalence of XBB15 has diminished, the most common circulating strains are considered related and the updated shots may offer crossover protection. A CDC advisory panel is set to meet in the next few days to make recommendations on how best to use the latest shots. The new vaccines are being manufactured by Pfizer, Moderna, and Novavax. Also last week, a 16-member FDA panel voted unanimously that phenylephrine, which is used in most over-the-counter decongestants, is not effective for this purpose. Phenylephrine, found in name brands such as Sudafed and Dayquil, became the primary ingredient following a 2006 law which limits access to pseudoephedrine, and that can be processed to create methamphetamines, so it's kept under lock and key if it's available at a pharmacy. If the FDA follows through on the panel's recommendations, manufacturers of phenylephrine containing products could be required to pull oral medications containing phenylephrine 
Currently, there are over 250 over-the-counter products containing phenylephrine. The decision does not include preparations administered through the nose, such as drops and sprays, which are more likely to reduce congestion because they are not metabolized before reaching their point of action. This week's meeting was prompted by a petition from scientists to remove phenylephrine products based on studies showing that they failed to outperform placebo pills in patients with cold and allergy congestion. Also last week, the FDA's Cardiovascular and Renal Drugs Advisory Committee voted 9-3 to that the benefits of patisseran outweigh its risks in the treatment of adults with cardiomyopathy induced by transthyretine amyloidosis. It's also called ATTRCM. Major discussion points during the advisory committee meeting included whether these key endpoints were appropriate to ascertain clinical meaningfulness in the ATTRCM population. Panelists expressed varying opinions on whether the magnitude of the benefits seen in clinical trial data was clinically meaningful. The FDA decision date for Batisaran in ATTRCM is on or before October 8, 2023. ATTRCM is a rare, rapidly progressive disease caused by a gene mutation resulting in misfolded transthyretine protein and excess amyloid buildup in the heart and other organs. Patisseran, which is manufactured by Alnalam, blocks the production of transthyretine protein and is already FDA-approved for treating polyneuropathy associated with hereditary ATTR amyloidosis. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining. And please, if you don't mind, could you tell your friends and colleagues, well, just your colleagues probably about this podcast so that it can help them do their job. If you're in the pharmaceutical industry, if you're an MSL or a medical writer, hopefully this podcast will be a short and sweet summary of the week's happenings to help you stay up to date in your work. Thanks so much. And hopefully I'll see you next week. Thank you.